And welcome back to the second episode of Tipsy Monday. I am your host, Jeff Richardson, back with my beautiful, beautiful guest, Julia Caruso. Julia, what's up? How are you doing? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm awesome. It's, it's so exciting to have you on the show today. I've been trying to get this organized. I wanted you on for a long time. I knew you'd be like a perfect, perfect fit for it. So we're going to have a lot of fun today. <laughs> high five, high, high five. five. You ready to have some fun? Yes, yes. All right. So Julia and I already... We've been, what do they call it, imbibing. So I'm trying to sound more cultured and sound more sophisticated now. We've been imbibing already. All right, I'm drinking, you guys know me, my old school Colt 40, or Steel Reserve. It used to be Colt 45, Steel Reserve. Julia's yeah. having some Guinness. Um, Big we've tradition. got yeah, St. Patty's Day on the horizon. Oh, that's right. Yes. Are, do, you, are, do you wear green? Do you wear green? No, because the real Irish don't wear green. Really? Why no. is that? I've never heard that. Uh, Explain I that to me. Because it's more of an American tradition. I mean, St. Patrick is kind of like a fictional character in Ireland. Okay. So See. we're here in the U.S. We like that, but. See, I'm getting educated. I had no idea. I didn't know that. I and then didn't. a real Irishman, or at least like a, a, a Catholic Irishman, or someone that was brought up in the Catholic mm -hmm. faith, would never wear orange with the green. I see all this stuff. I just think. Green beer, uh, what's it, uh, cabbage and sour, whatever the stuff is. That's all I know about St. Patrick's Day. I don't know all the, the ins and outs and behind the scenes stuff and like that. So I'm glad you're here. Yeah, corned beef and cabbage is again kind of a fictional <laughs> the idea of. Yeah. Do you like corned beef and cabbage? Just like those. You know, random. I don't eat corned beef because I haven't been able to eat meat since I was about 18. Oh, wow. So I, I do, sorry, I do eat chicken. Um, I'm going to be eating calamari steaks here soon, yep. but uh, no, it does not work well with my tummy, and we just, uh, my tummy and I decided a long time ago not to be forcing that issue. All right, well, before we get into this, I want to say this, because this is a disclaimer, because this is called Keeping It Real. We keep it real about everything. All right, I have the biggest crust on you in high school. You have no idea. You have no idea at all. All right, so I think you, if I remember right, I think you were a year ahead of me, yeah. and you were like... I'm gonna make her blush, but you like with all the cool kids and all this. If I be remember right, you were a cheerleader, and weren't you? Like you know, I transferred schools, so I went to um, I went to one school first, and then transferred to the one where where I saw you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And there were I had uh, an interest for a time in being a cheerleader. I became a Farsi cheerleader, and then oh, he <laughs> didn't like the smell. Nice yeah, go ahead. yeah, that uh, the calamari steaks. Yeah, we're getting yeah. Okay, um, no, that's just not. I really enjoyed. I enjoyed debate. I really enjoyed um, a few other things like soccer, and yeah. I felt like at 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 one point when I did do cheerleading, and I had um, some guys. Just for fun, I'm sure, decided to throw some ice from the stands. That pissed me off. So I was like, you know what, you're throwing at the boobies, and I know that, so I'm done with you. And I called them out, and that was it. And I'm like, stop, I'm not doing this anymore. Can you believe, like, all the changes that have happened since we were in high school? Like, I mean, social media, cell phones, texting, all that kind of crazy stuff. Could you have imagined, like, if we would have had to deal with that kind of stuff? Snapchat and Instagram and all that like peer pressure was already bad enough. Could you imagine if we would have had all this stuff added on? I think the thing that most troubles me would probably be the sexting and not to suggest yeah. that I, I'm a human being. I'm sure everybody on earth at some point with the phone has perhaps thought about it. I'm putting it out there. Yes. No comment. No comment. Um, <clears throat> but just I, it's I, I'd be horrified if that could like my worst fear honestly is that 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 comes out that it is a way to entrap people yeah. and I don't want something that my kid posts to harm her in getting jobs or even relationships in the future you know and I know people that you know I don't know I spent a little bit of time in HR and I know okay. so much that that is people don't even take that into consideration how much that is looked at I know that when people apply for jobs, employers go right to their social media pages. They're looking. They're looking for crazy, wild, racy oh, pictures, sure, sure. people that are in bars, like chugging beers and stuff. When you're in the moment, you're not thinking of that different kind of stuff. But 
these young kids, they don't understand that, that stuff is out there forever. It's like, it's there's, literally out there forever. Yeah. So, there's you know. somebody that was given a, um, this is a great example. Here's Silicon Valley, a guy, and because I work in HR too, yep. okay, a, an employment specialist, um, or rehabilitation counselor is actually my technical term, but cool. somebody was offered a job and the company just pulled back and said, after looking at your, your, your social media use, this was not professional and we would not want you representing our company. He was in Greece and laying on, a, you know, just floating in the ocean naked and took a pic. Oh, wow. And it's like, hi, I'm in the, you know, Mykonos Islands and this is what I'm, like, yeah, what yeah, are you doing? I mean, some of that, it depends on the field of work that you're going into. If you're going into something like fashion or m music or something like artistic and creative, I think there's a little bit more leeway when you're looking at corporate Fortune 500 type companies. Can't be doing that kind of stuff. Or even just, a small startup that you just got, you know, um, venture capitalists to invest in. You don't want the person who's in charge of your PR so dumb in in his or her own life that they don't look at that. The long and, term. Yeah. Absolutely. I think that's a big deal. Well, a big part of Tipsy Monday is that we try out crazy food. So nice. We've got some of these on deck. We've got giant calamari i guess that's squid right yeah okay no. so i went in i don't know i i, I went in i just like we got told you my family would do calamari but we would do stuffed squid and we would stuff it and then we'd cook it and then serve it with pasta for christmas eve like feast of the seven fishes this doesn't look like what i remember i, re I had yeah. calamari once at the beach on san diego and yeah. I, I thought it was fried like little you like, can it looked like little fried right shrimp. but remember the fried with the hole in it like mm. this the shell is a body and it's empty actually oh it has God. like an exoskeleton you take that out then we would stuff that with parsley um, a bread and egg mixture with mm -hmm. garlic and then we'd sew it up and then just like you'd cook it you'd fry it and then you'd add it to your sauce for a few hours but it was absolutely excellent this kind of looks a little funky but i would yeah. uh i mean it's canned <laughs> but if i were to do that i'd probably throw that into a crock pot and uh throw in some swiss chard or some kale and some uh heavy thai paste some good seasoning she knows what she's talking about okay. she's a, she's a gourmet she, for real she, she's modest she's like very humble but she's a gourmet um smoke, I like food. I like the, food. the smoked oysters we got the super hot barbecue pork rinds that we had last time. Um, we got a couple other things. One more thing I'm gonna grab real okay. quick. I forgot about these. Now with the pork rinds, I used to have friends that worked with me at DHL and we would put Frank's hot sauce, oysters, and uh, one of the pork skins. Do I eat pork skins? Yes, because I don't actually think it's meat. It isn't, it's just some kind of fluff flavor. Well, it's the skin, but it's really, I mean, think about it. Like How much meat is that? My body can't break down a lot of the protein, but this is no problem. Hummus. Yeah, I'll let Julie explain that. And Hummus, then. so garbanzo beans, olive oil, fresh lemon, and uh, just once you cook the, uh, once you cook the garbanzo beans, uh, yeah, super duper mash them up. I would probably add the garbanzo beans to the giant calamari <laughs> and the Swiss chard and make that a little meal. And then now the last thing she just told me, she said she's probably not going to eat these, but these are like some kind of turkey or some kind of roll. I don't Why know. Why do you do a turkey roll? I just grab whatever they are. They so it's a it. lettuce wrap or yeah. it's a tortilla wrap. Yeah, yeah. I just okay. grab that. So whatever. I'll remove the pepperoni. Okay. So anyway, okay. so she obviously knows way more about the food than I do. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about this because I consider myself an amateur good cook like on the grill. I love to grill in the summertime. I will grill two three times a week. Mm -hmm. I love throwing steaks on the grill. But there's a huge difference between cooking like for two to three people and cooking for 20 25 people because my thing is always about getting food seasoned to the right liking for everybody so 
but, but <laughs> alright? I don't know CPI. <laughs> <laughs> it can be the Heimlich at this point, but we're good, we're good. <laughs> I can still breathe. Okay, so, so no, like, so when you're, there's what I call cafeteria food, where yeah. it's, food is really bland and it's made with hardly no taste because you don't want to put too much pepper or too much this or too much that because everyone's different. How do you cook for big groups of, say, five or more people and have the spicing and the whatever to where everyone is okay with it? What do you do? How do you do that? Well, I think you have to taste it throughout. I think it makes no sense if you're any kind of cook, if a cafeteria cook or anything, you've got to look at does it taste good and then balance it with other items in the meal so that the other individual, if this is one thing that's too hot, mm -hmm. then how do you moderate it or help maybe condition that bite so the next one's not so, not so much. Sure. I personally, um, I have cooked for a very large family and I do have nieces and nephews that wouldn't be able to take super hot foods. So I do, I, you know, I, I know that, I know my audience. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I mean, I say I know my audience, but to be respectful for the food, season it. <laughs> I mean, if it doesn't taste good, how, I cook for me, and I cook to please them, and it's cook, cooking for love. But if they, um, if I know one person doesn't like hot sauce, so for example, one person, you know, is scared, mm -hmm. just shitless of trying yeah, calamari, yeah. then I'm going to maybe look at that subject as this might not be something that's going to please a great many people. I, I cook at my office. I will bring things in. And um, <clears throat> recently I did a shrimp bisque. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the um, Olive Garden, oh, what is it? Zuba de Toscana. Yeah. So I made that Zuba de Toscana, but I went online to the actual, like, fake recipe that they're putting, and I realized they don't okay. have enough spice. And so that was one of the first things I changed. And I also... Um, uh, I kind of just look at you double and then add more and then add more. Yeah. So like um, just yesterday I did roast chicken and I had uh, red cabbage in it and I had some beautiful colorful uh, carrots and bright green celery and it was a very pretty display. It had a lot of fresh thyme in it yeah. and then I um, actually cooked it with um, um, a white wine. And then added some garlic, and I added like two big onions to it because it gave it great flavor. Yeah. Well, I made the gravy, and I made the gravy by, it, it's kind of like, make it the real way. I'm going to have butter, and I'm going to have roux, and I'm going to add a little white wine or sherry, mm -hmm. or um, like, like uh, what is it, uh, not Madeira sauce, but I don't know, Marsala. Okay. So it's good to have good ingredients so you can always throw it in. It's good to have fresh basil or fresh parsley or fresh cilantro because then you've got Italian food, you've got um, Middle Eastern food, and you yeah. also have um, you know, Latin food. Or we're not always Latin American, I mean Hispanic food. Do you like Thai food? I do. I, I, the oven, do you, like, that place is, um, I went down there. That's Indian. Indian. Yeah. See? yeah, that's Indian. And actually, specifically, it's, <clears throat> I want to say, it's a, it's an island off of India, and I can't remember, it's not Barani. I can't remember what they call it, but it's, it's a specific region of India, and that's what they cook. Why is the food so spicy there? Like, why is everything hot? Like, almost everything that I ordered, everything on the menu was super, super freaking hot. Like, I... And it was good food. I liked it. I enjoyed it. Some of the stuff was just like, it was beyond. Like, I'm like, really? Like, but, how, what did you order? I, I don't remember. Don't okay, so I ordered beer. something and it was, it was so bad. I, I literally, I took one bite of it. Really? I told, I told the server, hey, I can't do this. And she started laughing and she's like, hey, well, you know, I, a lot of people that happens with them. Really? And they let me like reorder something and they replaced it. And they okay. told me, so it, it was, you know, it was, it was all right. But I just, the hot stuff, this is my, like, for me, like I like lasagna is probably my favorite dish. Mm -hmm. Like I can't make it, but I can't get good lasagna. Like almost anywhere I go, especially like fast, like not fast food, but like 
Valentino's the Zoli's, is, not for Zoli's. Zoli's. No. it's terrible. Yeah. It's just, it's like you eat it and it's like it's out of the box or whatever. There's, there's no seasoning to it. So I was always, that, that's just my thing. What we're going to do real quick, What let's let's try something together okay. at, simultaneously at the same time. Okay. Are you going right, to so, do the oysters? Yeah, let's do that. Let's okay, do that. Okay, so I've got oysters on a cracker and okay. the oysters are smoked, so it's got a, a great flavor. Okay. And Good. you've got oysters not spicy. and this is... No, but I just threw on that original hot sauce. That's going to be hot. Here's the thing about understanding the composite. You've got this, which is going to neutralize the heat. Okay. If you wanted to, you could have butter, or like in the Indian food, you'd have the yogurt. Oh, okay. So then that, that helps. Remember, just like a burn, if you cover it with milk, okay, yep. not yeah. butter, but milk, that makes sense. Um, then it's going to, it's actually, it, it goes over the fat. You know, it's the fat that goes over and protects it. All right, let me still, I'm going to have a cracker here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do that because you're right. You put it on there. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm, pretty good. You got the smokiness? Mm-hmm. It's actually pretty good. Yep, in different layers. So I recommend Frank's, actually. For that. Mm -hmm. Now, let's mm -hmm. take it up a notch. It's getting a little hot now. Right, right. Now, take it up a notch. Now, do one with this. That's a little, little spicy. All right. You're going to do, the same, you're gonna do yep. the same thing for me, right? Okay. Got it. All right. You so, need a little? Yeah, one one little dash. Yeah, I get Why does stuff have to smell so bad, though? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Ready? Ready, set. First of all, cheers. we got to do a cheers. 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 Yeah, because the Guinness is a great mix with this. Alright, now we're going to... I'd probably do Mexican beer with that. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, with, uh, I almost got Soul. that. I almost got that today. Soul. Mm -hmm. That's really? good. Uh-huh. Now, these taste like different brands than what I usually get as far as the pork rinds. I usually get the a small little bag. Ooh, these are kind of spicy. Layer it. Good though. Have a bite of the mm -hmm. cracker or the tortilla so you have the edge of the or the fat taking the edge off. These are Take good. See? I like that. Okay. Because you're right, that makes it because that's a red chili right there. Right. And that's where all that mm -hmm. is coming from. Right. Look at you. You just you have no problem at all. You're like, no, no, I would I would do a little cucumber in here or a little red pepper for the sweetness and the cucumber's sweet too and it kind of chills it out. Plus, it's pretty pretty. It's a little garnish. Food has to look good, too. Do you? Okay. I'm a wing addict. Mm hmm. I'm, I'm mm -hmm. wings. That's my thing. So, you like the real hot sauce on wings? Mm hmm. Do you? Mm hmm. All right. We're going to get into something because Julia is super passionate about politics and social issues and activism and all that kind of stuff. So, we want to get into as much of that as we can cover. I know that you have a lot of things that are near and dear to you. Um, that you're very, very, you know, committed to and dedicated to. I love your social media. Thank Let, you. Donald Trump, lightning rod controversy, obviously, around the world. You either love him, you hate him. There's nobody that's in the middle. Tell me, Donald Trump, your thoughts, pro, for, against, hate, like, your Actually, biggest issue. Tell my, me. Tell my biggest me. issue, honestly, is that people aren't just love or hate. They are too many people in the middle that do not rock the boat and do not care. And I find myself, especially the older I get, um, I want to continue challenging myself, mm -hmm. but I really resent when people can't take a side. I support looking and researching and knowing more about something, wanting to know more about mm -hmm. something. But the minute you turn off your learning, your self-education, your non-interest in lifelong learning, I think I tune you out. And I do because I think for me, it's almost like I'm, um, um, it, it's completely unreal to me that you've just, you've just forced yourself, you've made an ostrich seem like it's an acceptable thing to put your head in the sand. And those are the people right now. The people that are for him, to me, I think that there's a very big educational divide 
You know what? We could do both at this point. I mean, it is called Thirsty. <laughs> Jesus God. Tipsy oh Monday. my God, no. <laughs> Tipsy Monday. We're having a Tipsy Tipsy Thursday. Money. It was going to be Thirsty. We're, gonna live up, we're living up to the name. I think I need an opener. Um, <laughs> I think that's the part that challenges me the most. I need an opener. Mm. Is that there is no. I don't want to make a decision. I don't want to cross that line. I don't want to do this. And maybe that's the part that kills me the most. Like I've, I've had, I'm sorry for interrupting, but no, I've no. had two, more than two people who I, I kind of grew up with. And they were like, um, and it was actually after Roger, Roger, what's his name, Males? Males Roger, okay. I hate that. So, it was horrific, yeah. and I actually had somebody on social media kind of come out to me and say, um, you know, he is a human being, he has family, and I said, you know, you're right. He just was not, uh, I, I, I believe that I, I want to always, like, rise above, but there are times you're like, no, nah, fuck that, I you know? know? I know. And I'm, I'm like, you know, he's not a good guy. Roger Ailes was not a good man. Was I there in the room? No. Can I look at him and I feel like um, I would have, that's nice to have a cracker in my cow neck. No, Roger, what are you like, okay, as a, as a woman, yeah. as the Me Too movement and all that stuff has got a lot of momentum and traction right now. I have a lot of respect for that. I, but for me, there's a situation, or there's a difference, there's a fine line between being passionate about something and being like fanatical about it where you get to a point where for me you lose the ability to be objective and you are so focused that ah, you know like, like the me too thing like, okay I don't want this is a very touchy subject and I I don't want to offend anyone or but I don't believe that every single time I believe everything is on a case-by-case -case scenario I don't think that there is every single time the man is lying the man is guilty he's you know what are your thoughts on the Me Too? Um... You know, I I could not. I'm kind of smiling when I say that because I've I've thought about this. I actually couldn't come forward and say the Me Too thing because it's not one story. Really? Oh, I've got hundreds. I've got hundreds. Really? Yeah. And I've always felt you like, never you never told anybody. Uh uh. Well, yeah told a few people, but it was, if I were to come forward, if I were to actually write every single one of my Me Too cases, I really felt like there'd be somebody on the other side initially said, well, what is she doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And, but they don't know what it's like to be an 11 year old girl or, you know, 12 year old, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, I'm 48. I was just harassed on my job last year. Mm -hmm. And I... I think I live it. Was and it? What, how how did it happen? Was it like, in person? Was it email? Like in, inappropriate? Someone like yes. They can take the form of so many different things. Yep. Someone can send someone a joke that, no, or a meme. Is, this is not that. It wasn't that? No, okay. this wasn't that. This was. Um, I can't go into it because I don't have a hundred and thirty thousand dollars resting yeah. on this. Mm -hmm. But. Um, no, it was something that, and I, I, I understand gender harassment, and I understand sexual harassment, and I work with a number of veterans mm -hmm. who have been harassed, who suffer horrific PTSD, anxiety, generalized okay, anxiety a disorder. What do you mean by that? Well, I work, actually, um, I work with veterans, and I, who, I work with refugees, I work with veterans, I work for, with all different types of people who are looking for work. So I'm not going to tell you what I do for a living, but yeah. I find people jobs. But um, many times there have been women who have been in the military that I work with that have horrific, horrific no. histories. I mean, we're talking gang rape by fellow officers. And I read, is, I read a statistic. Happens. I don't know if it's accurate. I, I read this statistic once that of the Gulf War or the Desert Storm that 13% of the females that served in Desert Storm came back from duty pregnant by a man other than their husband. And I, I mean, I, that's shocking to me. 
Well, I'd probably go to Snopes first. I did work right. with a lot of veterans and have uh, part of a master's thesis I did was on depression and women coming back from um, Operation Enduring Freedom, yeah. Operation Iraqi Freedom, and I guess I would say 13% sounds very high. Does it really? Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's 13%. But I would say the female narrative in the armed forces is extremely hard because their narrative is not just women, but they are officers, or they are in, enlisted in a male-directed army that funnels very little money to their, you know, medical mm -hmm. needs. Mm -hmm. not, not, not to mention, um, you know, we are capable. We can serve on the front lines. We are really good at serving on the front lines, but at, at a toll. Oh, when oh your God. narrative is not, I, I'm a soldier first, and then I come back home. Well, I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a lover. Yeah. But what is my narrative? Taking office duties, making sure I buy the Crunch and Munch and the cornflakes and the Happy O's. You say Crunch and Munch because I got Crunch and Munch. I know. <laughs> I read it on top of his fridge. But, that, but the point is, you, you're coming back to a very interesting, almost, I won't say a subservient status, but it's a very interesting status as a woman, depending on if you are in a relationship, if you're not, if you have kids, if you're not. It's just different. I'm chauvinistic, I guess, because I would, I mean, you know, I, I, I believe women can do everything a man can do. I, I believe in equal pay and all that stuff, and I'm not just saying that to be politically correct. I honestly truly believe that. But that's not that. so, uh, chauvinist. I would never want my daughter to go to the military. I mean, hypothetically, I, I would never want my daughter. I, I just, you know, I, I couldn't imagine that situation and her being in there and the environment. I, I just... But why not change the environment so the environment doesn't suck and rape her? Why yeah, change? She has the right to be a nurse, to be a doctor, to be a lawyer, and to not be raped. But what if your job. kid came to you and said, "I think this is what I want to do." I want, yeah. I want, you're okay with that? Absolutely. For for the most important thing, I I actually wanted to serve. I wanted to defend our country. I actually wanted to be a marine, and I went there and I wanted to sign up. And they said, "I'm sorry, you have psoriasis, and it is." They can and, determine that with that young? Well, I was 18 and oh. or 19 years of age and I so I had done a year of army ROTC and then they said no. But I'm not I'm not interested in the in a war machine. I'm interested in um I don't know. I guess I would say defending our freedoms, but I, I'd have to say my ego was totally they, balls they, on to want to be a Marine. They disqualified me because I have flat feet. I didn't even know what flat feet were. They were like, hey, they came to my high school, my senior year, and they were yeah. signing people up. That's when you still had to register and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. And the guy literally had me walk to, to one end of this gym and then back the other. He goes, you can't. I'm like, he's like, I'm like, he's like you're flat footed. What's flat footed? You're flat footed, you can't serve. It has something to do with marching or mm -hmm. something. I was like, okay, cool. I didn't want to go anyway, but I mean, it got me out of it. I just like, I have the draft, too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If there would be a draft, yeah. Okay. All right, so we're coming to the end of segment number okay. one. We're going to change the tape. We're going to have another cocktail, and then we're going to get back into more fun, fun activities or conversations. Julia, you're killing it. You are absolutely killing it tonight. We're gonna, we got a lot of good stuff to get into. This is one thing. I dare you to eat that hot pepper. I dare you. I dare I'm her. doing it right now. Come on. Bring it. Bring it. No way. Really? Are you You're not having to like chug the beer and wash that down? No. Are you serious? Still no. You're hiding it. No. Yes, you are. It's I'm hot. I'm hiding. It's no, hot. I'm not. No, I'm not. Is it hotter than, is it hotter than this stuff? No. No. Okay. All right. No, it's one, it's one red pepper. Oh. Now, a red pepper that sits on the vine... Usually it's a little bit sweeter because it's got like eight weeks it's on that vine. I have a friend that eats peppers, bell peppers. He's like apples, eats my good apples. Apple, oh bell peppers God. are extremely sweet. Ridiculous. They've been on the vine about eight weeks longer than a regular pepper, a green one. Besides, if you can eat green or yellow veg or yellow or red vegetables or, or fruits, they're really good high in antioxidants. I can't do it. I'm just not a vegetable guy, uh, you know. For me, <laughs> I if I mean a potato doesn't count as a vegetable, really. But I do like veg. I like potatoes. What about greens? 
Mm. You're kind of dark. Mm. And you know, for vitamin D, you're...